genetically modified. What does that mean? A banana with eyes? Or more soy in your bean? Let's stop for a second and back up a bit. And let's see what's a gene and where does it fit. All stuff is made up of small chemical atoms, stacked up together in grandiose patterns. But life is more complex and built to strict plans, from chemical recipes in DNA strands. Genes are sentences which describe functions and traits, like the shape, size, or stegosaurus plates. 10,000 years back, at the very start of farming, humans picked the traits that we found charming. Selective breeding took these best variations, refining over and over generations. And whatever the characteristic or colour, twas determined by genes in one way or another. Today we can use enzymes to snip DNA, so genes can be cut, pasted, moved any which way. Boost a gene, block a gene, bring a gene from elsewhere. Animal, bacteria or plant you can share. No, no, not quite like that. It requires more precision to make a genetically modified organism. Using a virus, gene gun or tiny needle, we change canola or pig and cure people. Human insulin producing bacteria or clotting factors to treat haemophilia. Transgenic plants can be made far more persistent, pest weed killer and harsh condition resistant. Oil crops, corn and rice have been made more nutritious. Virus resistant squashes, no less auspicious. In research, jellyfish genes act as markers in mammals. We tweak model fruit flies like tiny control panels. Okay, okay, dicing genes is undoubtedly clever, but has anyone asked about the whys and the weathers? The pros, advance science and improve all the crops. The cons, unforeseen issues and stumbling blocks. So are we cautious or Luddites if we stand in the way? Perhaps missing advancements that might save the day. Gene modification is a precise way to make clever changes to DNA. It's no magic bullet for all the ills we've got, but as a technology, it's worth a shot. Most gene changes are very minor tweaks, a long way away from horror movie freaks. Yet even simple changes can do quite a lot. Many go blind from vitamin A never got. Golden rice solves this problem with more beta carotene, all from daffodils and soil bacteria gene. Vaccine injections aren't so cheap or hassle-free, but if you could grow them on trees, how would that be? Insert protein for harmless bit of virus coat primes the immune system as it goes down your throat. Hepatitis B is a big liver killer. Bananas could stop it and be stomach filler. A serious business is a nut allergy. Could a nut-free nut be the best therapy? Removing three protein should do the trick. If it still tastes like a nut, then that's pretty slick. Farm salmon eat too much and grow far too slow. Adding Chinook genes could boost how fast they grow. Of course, not all GMO crops are for eating. There's other research that's proceeding. Plants engineered to replace oil, petros for short. More efficient sunshine conversion, that's what's sought. Might store their excess energy as oil in bean. Whether this can replace all fuel remains to be seen. Trees can produce rubber, which is pretty elastic. The dream to go further and produce tree-grown plastic. A weed with bacterial enzymes a solution to degrade TNT, cleaning blast site pollution. This crop of new ideas sounds pretty astounding. So why do critics give gene tech such a pounding? The us and them is a constant frustration. How do we agree in this situation? Rather than engage on points that are factual, you'll often hear that GMO is unnatural. Which, of course, is completely true, like computers, cars, and modern medicine do. But people still feel there's a hidden danger. Editing genes, what could be stranger? So let us give these bad feelings some precedence and discuss them in the light of the evidence. 130 studies, 25 years. Independent research says have no fears. While we can add more papers to the balance sheet, GM is as safe as any other food you eat. GM changes organisms with a cut and paste. More nutritious, more resistant, allergens erased. Slow to spoil, makes medicines, fossil fuels replaced. Is there no problem it can't solve? <laughs> well, actually, now you mention it. Modest GM yield increases won't stop starvation. The real solution needed? Better administration. Breeding, management and sustainability still play a huge part in farm fertility. Insect killing genes from bacteria called Bt means we should use insecticide less intensively. But on the other hand, herbicide tolerant breeds keep up the spraying and creating super weeds. 
Yes, cross-contamination can colonise crops, but evolution and breeding also cause gene hops. Many consumers view GM with suspicion. Some transparency might just change that position. For example, labelling might be a big pain, but consumer choice is a reasonable claim. Big companies protecting genes with patent deeds need to understand farmers want to own their own seeds. Corporate misbehaviour is not GM specific. Plenty of players in the field are terrific. Regardless of the side you're on, there is no doubt. The gene engineering genie is already out. Let's bring together hopes, fears, values, trade-offs, facts. And scientists will stop with their we know best acts. If we walk a path between research and caution, we can have solutions and safety in equal proportion.